We Got This Africa is an April Communications production with support from Kaiser. Proudly brought to you by Frytol. Frytol, you deserve a life of goodness. <laughs> Girl, listen. We got this. If you're considering suicide right now, your pain must seem permanent and overwhelming. No matter how you feel right now, know that you are not alone. Many celebrated, admired, beautiful, highly successful people have been suicidal at some point in their lives. Today on We Got This Africa, I'm going to be speaking to two lovely ladies who have stories to share on this subject. My name is Na Shoko. You're welcome to our show. To have a hearty, healthy family. Phytol Sunflower Cooking Oil. Also cholesterol free for tasty, healthy meals. Love your food, love your life. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the FDA. I'm joined in the studio today by my very favorite YouTuber, <laughs> Miss K. Hi, How are you doing? I'm good. You're welcome to the show. Also in the studio, I've got Miss Matilda. Hello. How are you? I'm fine. I'm so happy you ladies have joined me on the show today. This topic is really sensitive. In recent times, I have had some very close friends of mine attempt suicide, and that drove me nuts. Tell me about your attempt. Okay, actually, it happened somewhere around 2013. Somewhere around 2013. That was when I had just graduated from nursing training and had begun working. So I'm the type who likes to befriend guys. I like, I'm the boys' boys' type. Okay. Because I have stepbrothers who are all military men. So, like, I grew up with them. So I love to be with the guys' guys' stuff. So, like... Um, I have friends, I will have to hook them up with ladies and all that and lo and behold, they are getting married. You, you give somebody a boyfriend or a girlfriend and their relationship is cool like that, it's like bed of roses and yourself, you are not getting it. You weren't getting a boyfriend? No, you get it and things are not working for you. Your relationships weren't so great. It, it was very bad. It, 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 it was very bad. At a point when I met someone, I thought everything was okay. This is my best. And then I feel that at this point we are getting, we are tidying the knots and all that. I just woke up one day and then realized that the guy's sister paid a visit in Kumase to visit me. And then she was like, she's going for a funeral. And I was going to work. I was for morning duty, so I was going to work. So actually something was, I was having a bad, hunch about the whole issue. Uh, you're going for a funeral on Thursday. I was like, okay. I just left, went to work, and the guy also called me. Are you at work? I said, yeah. And when are you close? I said, two. What's, what's your itinerary for the day? I said, after work, you know nothing more. I go back to the house and I rest. Before I could close from work, I got a call from his, I think his older brother's wife, asking me if I could do her a favor that is go to their house in Kumase. They lived in a Tema, but they had a house in Kumase. So if I could go to their house in Kumase. And then I was living around 
a juice. So like from a juice to Santa, I say, it's not easy. So I told her I cannot do it. And she said, oh, please, I need a favor. I want you to take something from the security man in the house and then bring it to your house. When I'm coming from Accra, I'll pick it up. I said, ah, what kind of, this is too much. I can't do it. And then she kept begging me and she was like older than I am. So I needed to give her the due respect she, she deserved. So out of frustration, I, I just had to take a car and go back. So like on my way back, I kept feeling nervous just like that. I was like, ah, what's wrong with me? I got to the gate, the security man just saw me and was like, Madame Wu, baby. And I was like, what? What's going on? I saw that there were cars parked. I entered the place and one guy was like, Brenda, don't do this. And I said, what am I doing? I'm to pick something on somebody's behalf. Why are you people behaving like this? No, no, the guy was getting married. Your boyfriend was yes. getting married. So I got to the gate and I realized that he was really getting married. So one of his friends came out and was like, Bernie, I'm really sorry. We didn't plan that, but he had to. I said, like, seriously, he's getting married. So at that moment, a lot of questions kept coming. Is something wrong with me? Why can't I have a man on my, of my own? Why is my friends getting married? Why is my relationship not working out? So like, I, I was really a mess at that time. The only thing I remember was I stopped the taxi. I woke up in my friend's house. She said she was there and she felt like calling me. So she called me and um, the taxi driver picked that. I, I stopped there, but I wasn't able to tell him where I was going. So he decided to just drive. And then God being so good, my friend called and he picked the phone and like, somebody has picked me up and then she's just crying. She's not even talking and anything. So my friend directed the taxi driver to their house. And then I had to sleep over. The, uh, she was married then. So I slept over. So when I woke up, the husband happened to be a very staunch Christian. So the guy sat me down, spoke to me at length. And then it wasn't easy. I have always known myself to be a very strong woman. But at that moment, a lot of things kept um, um, occurring because this was a guy who has like followed you for years asking you just because he wants to go out with you he kept he kept asking you yeah. pursuing you and all that and then all of a sudden when you thought that you have agreed his family knows you you've been introduced you've also introduced my I think my father died my foster father died and then he came to the funeral with us relative so everybody knew that was, that was your man that was my man how did you feel when you walked in and saw him get married i i i i, I was just like a peep i just entered like this and i saw did he see you i don't know whether he did but his friends were at the gates and one of them was like brainy this is not what we planned i said like okay so i just left after my friend's husband spoke to me i told myself i have to go to work if I stay in the house, this is going to really get me hard. So the next day, I realized that I was not eating. Nothing excites me. I go to work. I do I'm working. But deep down, I was really hurt. So I had this colleague at, at work who knew about this relationship, Juanita. And then she was like, Abina, I know this is not easy. Come and live with my husband. And I said, no, I want to be alone. So. During that time, that was the year like four of my friends had gotten married. That year, particular year. So during that, I was like, okay, marriage is not meant for me. Relationship is not my portion. Okay, what is life? When you can't find somebody who will love you just the way you are. And I am that type who is not cool with my mom. I didn't go up having that motherly love like any other person has. So like, I was all alone battling with this thing and I didn't know who to talk to. I have a brother I'm very close to, but he is more emotional than I am. Hmm. So like opening up to him too, I didn't know how he's going to feel. So like I'll be in the room when I close from work, no food, I didn't want to eat. And then I had, I had that plate rack in my room. So there's this bread knife on it. I just be lying on the bed, reminiscing all the good times I spent with the guy. 
And I couldn't just bring out one time we had a misunderstanding. No. It's like he does something. I, I, I address it. And he tells you his story. And on we go. So like, I was like, whoa, did I really do something to this guy? I couldn't just lay my hands on. And this was after like series of relationship had failed. So I kept asking myself, is something really wrong with me? Don't I deserve to be happy? I, so all those thoughts kept flipping. And then one day I was just on the bed. I picked the knife. <laughs> I just, I told myself that, what if I end it? At that moment, I just remembered that if not for anything, I had gotten to where I am now, not on a, a bed of roses or a silver platter. I told the Lord to complete nursing. So why do I have to give up now? Is it worth my death? He's even married with a woman. He's happy. And then I, I, I kept remembering that there were these girls at my church who would look at me and said, Auntie Brenda, we are looking up to you. So like I was remembering people who, who, who felt I inspired them. So like at that moment, I said, okay, let me just end it. And then another voice would tell me, don't do it. So it, it kept flipping. Just do it, don't do it. Just do it, don't do it. Just when I felt I needed to end life, my life, I, I just remembered my father, that the day he was leaving, and he never came again. He told me that he believes in me, and he knows that I'll get to where I really have to get to where he'll be smiling in heaven. So no matter what happens, if one day I wake up and I feel he's no more, I should just know that he left my mother and my siblings in my care. So like, I was like, what if I die? What will happen to my mother? Because a widow raising five kids on her own wasn't easy. So I just remembered my mother at that moment. I remembered how she became shattered when my father died. And I was like, what will become of her if I should also die? This is not worth it. I have to leave. This guy does not, de de she doesn't, he doesn't deserve seeing my tears, no, dying for him. He's not worth it. So I just had to. Picked the plate rack. I knocked on my landlord's room and I told him that I needed to keep those things in his room till morning. So the man saw that I was tearing. So he came around with the wife, was like, What's wrong? I said, No, there's nothing wrong with me, but I needed him to keep those things. So first thing tomorrow morning, I packed my things, went to see my mother, and I hugged her. I just hugged her. She was like, and I told her, I just need that. I don't want to talk. So that's it. Mm, I'm so sorry. OK. How long ago was this? I was around 2013. 2013, yeah. Are you feeling better now? Yeah, yeah just I'm, I'm OK. I'm really OK. I'm fine. Whew. Really thank looking. you for sharing. And thank you for not doing it. Yeah. It wasn't worth it. Matilda. Yeah. What's yeah. your story? Mine, I was, I was really young. And then like she said, um, I also didn't have this motherly love thing. I never had it. So I was going through some things in school. How old were you? I was 15. It was 2011 by then. I, I was going through some things in school. You know, I'm, because, because of my body, I get teased a lot. I get teased, even walking by the roadside. And then I had a girl mom. She's, she was very strict because of where I came from. Where do you come from? When you come from Bookholm, Jamestown, if you're not really strict on your kids, they end up somewhere. 
My mom was really strict. She's the typical girl mom that when she, she's even talking to you, you can't even look in her eyes. It's disrespectful. And I didn't really have that relationship of telling her what I go through on a normal day in school. And I had this particular teacher. He was a male teacher. Every time he's on my case, he, he can say hurtful things to me. Look at how you look. You look ugly. And, and sometimes I come home, I just need a time to myself. And my mom comes with this being strict teen. She would just shout on you. And me personally, I've, I've had a lot of things, my feelings, because I don't have anybody to share it with. I only share it with my kid sister, and she's really young. I remember being raped some time ago. I couldn't even tell my mom because she was, she was too, too strict. So I was going to write my exams by then and I couldn't even study. My results were bad. Everywhere I tend to, everybody was on my case and I wasn't happy. I wasn't happy for like a whole year. I had a very good relationship with my dad. But whenever I tried to open up my dad, my mom keeps telling my dad, oh, you're spoiling her, you know? So my dad also changed. So it was like me against the whole world. It was just me. So one day I sat down, I'm like, ah, if, if everybody don't want me, and if I'm so bad like everybody's saying, if I'm this ugly, because whenever I look in the mirror, I see myself to be very ugly. Uh, and I never loved myself. And then I, I, come of, I come from a family of five. I have a brother and a kid sister, so I'm, I'm in the middle. And then I told myself, okay, how about if I die, if I kill myself, my mom is going to be happy because my sister is very brilliant. My brother is also brilliant. And I feel like I'm their only problem. So if I just leave, they're going to be like a very happy family. So I just said it to myself and then I relaxed on it. Three days, it came back. It's, it, the, it, every time I'm alone, it comes back. Kill yourself, kill yourself. So I have this Bible my dad gave me. So I wrote a suicide note on it. I actually wrote everything I felt, except for the rape part, because my mom still doesn't know about it. I still don't want to tell her about it, but I'm sure she's going to hear it now. I wrote about it. I wrote about how I felt and why I wanted to kill myself. I read it so many times. Then on one faithful Sunday, I sing at church. So I decided to do it. So I wrote uh, three. I put one in my dad's pocket. I put one in my mom's bag. And then I put one under our fridge, uh, on top of our fridge. So I went to church. I, I sang so well that day. I, I was singing like it was my last on earth. I, I poured my heart out. I remember I was crying at church. Everybody was like, oh. Why are you crying? And I came home and I looked at my kid sister and I told my kid sister, I promised her that I was always going to be there for her because I feel like my mom doesn't know what she's doing. I promised I was going to be there for her no matter what happens, but I have to go. And I think she's going to be fine because she's strong enough to be fine. She was like, ah, what are you saying? So I told her to go out. She was with her friends, so she went out. And then by then we had this um, girl people. So I put it in a cup and I waited for it to melt. So I was the only one in the room and I was crying. I was looking at the bleach and my sister came and said, ah, are you going to drink it? I'm like, but I told you to go out. She was standing there, she said, I won't go out. So I'm like, well, even if you don't go out, still drink it. And before I could realize it, I just drank it. You drank it? Yeah, I did. And it dawned on me that, oh, so I am doing this, I'm going to die. I stood there and I saw my sister crying. And then I realized, what if, if I leave her? What if somebody also raped her like they did to me? Is my mom going to be there? Because she is focused on raising her kids and not letting people talk about her kids' character. And I don't blame her for that. I think she's doing well for that. But who is going to take care of my sister? And then my tummy started hurting. So my sister went out, started shouting to our neighbors. And then one lady came in and then they gave me red oil. And I started vomiting. And then they told my mom, 
long story short, we went to the hospital. I came home good. But it turned worse when we got home. Because she didn't, she didn't understand depression. She didn't understand mental health. She was like, why do you want to die? So if you want to die, okay, then kill yourself. My mom can literally put a knife in front of me and tell me if I, if I die, my sister is going to replace me. I remember my friends coming from school to visit me and they tell me, ah, otodobu. Then do it fast. It won't work or it won't work. Just stop yourself. So I had that mind again because I was like, if, if I, I didn't do it because of my sister. And if these people doesn't still care, then what the hell? But then my, my dad told me that the reason why I see all these things is because I don't get someone to talk to, but he's here and he needs me. My sister needs me. My mom needs me. She's just acting tough. And then this is supposed to be part of my story so that I'll help people out. So I decided that, okay, then I'm not going to ever hurt myself again. And since then, it has never really come into my mind again. And it's not something I would like to do again. Wow. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You're watching We Got This Africa. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. To have a hearty, healthy family. Phytol Sunflower Cooking Oil. Also cholesterol free for tasty, healthy meals. Love your food, love your life. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the FDA. Kaiser Intelligence System is that magical experience in our lapel range. And it's got a TFT touch control system in this extractor. An induction hot plate with a tempered glass surface powered by the world premium Shot Siran shock resistant and it comes with its grill plates every space of this induction hob can cook and we call it the freezo just touch to control the extractor fan speed the power slide on the induction hob gives you the freedom to regulate its power to your desire magically powerful in extracting heat smoke and harmful odors without being a noisy nuisance in your cooking space and because we care the induction hob has a safety guard and child lock function. Now, look at that food. Kaiser knows how to bring the best in every cook. Kaiser, power in action. Sometimes, unless and until you have had suicidal thoughts or actually tried to kill yourself, you never understand why other people will think it or do it. Today on the show, we'll try to understand and learn how to be there for our friends and family or even ourselves when we have thoughts of ending it all. What one thing would you have liked people in your life or maybe one person in your life to have done for you at the time when you were having those thoughts? I would, have, I would have loved for my mom to listen to me or ask me what's, what's happening, be there. Not being there by just being the mom that she is, but being my friend. Because at that time, I didn't understand a lot of things in life. 
I wanted, I wanted her to be there for me to be able to talk to her about what I'm going through. For her not to think, oh, I'm being dramatic or me because that's what they think when you tell them how you feel. And honestly, I, I don't know, but I wanted her to be there, she, she in particular. Because even if I'm sharing all these things with my, my sister, she's too young to understand all these things. I tell her just for her to be aware of what I'm going through. But I just, at that point, I needed my mom. Miss Kate, what one thing would you have liked someone to do or say to you at the time? Now, I really want to tell our friends out there that they should never assume we are strong. Never assume? Yeah, we are strong. Like your friends are strong? Yes. You, you should never assume it because I think I would have never allowed a friend who is going through this to be alone, no matter what. Even though you wanted, you told them you wanted I, to be alone. Yes, but I, I am I'm that person. They know me. When you are depressed or when you are going through something and you tell me about it, I don't allow you to be by yourself. Sometimes I can even worry them. Uh, I can be in your house, no matter, irrespective of the time. Just call me, I'll be there. So, like, don't assume I'm strong. We... Lately, we do posters on status and all that. But that is not enough. Some people think that chatting with people is enough to know how the person is feeling. But it's best to pick a phone, call the person. How are you doing? The person's voice will even give the person up, whether he or she is okay or not. So let's not assume our friends are okay with text messages, no. You know, you were saying that you went to church and you were singing and yes. you were actually being great. So how... how how would people, like, how could we have guessed, or the people in your life have guessed that well, there was something wrong with you? Did you show people in any way, aside telling your sister, you know, that you'd be there for her, did you do anything else that could have drawn their attention to what you were thinking? No. No, I didn't. I just, I just, I just wanted, I just wanted it to be, to be good. If it's my last, at least they should see me with a smile on, being grateful once, because I felt like it was my last. You, you wanted to say? Yeah, I wanted to say that um, if you are very observant, like this Sunday, for instance, people know me to be the lively person and all that. But Sunday, I, I went for nine duty and I went to church after. So like I had that stressful look on my face. Immediately I entered, one guy said, Jamau free night in Eba. Because your face doesn't look the lively type we all know who will be dancing around here and there. So, like, people should learn to observe people. Like, if she is the type who is always like that, you could assume that, oh, it's a normal routine stuff she's doing. But all of a sudden, she comes to church, she's happy, she's singing, she's crying. At least one person could go to her and ask, Are they, is everything okay with you? Oh, you're okay. That's alone, no. If not for anything, she could have opened up and voice out that, oh, I'm fine. But if, 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 if nobody, oh, they feel you are so happy, they just leave you like that for you to go, you wouldn't know what's happening. Did you get help after you had suicidal thoughts? Did you get any counseling? Yes, I did. What kind of counseling? So I spoke to a friend's mother, and then I was always with them. So like, she, Though she, she was very emotional about it, like, how? How could he do this and all that? At a point, she sat me down and was like, probably you're not meant to be. There's nothing wrong with you. With you. you are good. Just, just tell yourself that he didn't deserve you. Life still goes on. You are not meant to be. Just forget about him and just move on with your life. So, like, from those words I heard from her, I think at that moment, that is all I really needed. It's like, and I am that type, I don't really allow things to dawn on me for a very long time. No matter how hard it is, I just pick the pieces together and I get moving. So you see me crying at this moment, the next minute I'm laughing. It will surprise you. That, uh, was she not the one who was really crying outside there? I just keep moving. So like, after the woman spoke to me, I stayed with them for like three days. I was just okay, and I, 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 I just began my daily routine. So one day, he came on Facebook. I had blocked all his line to send me a message that I should forgive him. 
Oh, nah. I need that hiss again a thousand times. <laughs> then I should forgive him. I was like, oh, seriously. Did you respond? I, I asked him, like, seriously. So I told him that if you could just come out to tell me one thing I did that made him take that action, I would tell him he's forgiven. Until then, he's going to live with the guilt for the rest of his life. When I was done, I just blocked him back again. So till date, I've never spoken to him again. So if you die, you say sorry to your cops. Uh -huh. <laughs> did you get any help? Well, yeah, I did. I got, I got help from my uncle, who is my bishop, he's my pastor. I got a lot of help from him. And then he made my mom understand that she's lacking on the motherly connection. She's doing well, but that's where she's lacking. And then I got help from my dad too. He, he really helped me a lot. So yeah, I did. I got, I got helped. After you, you didn't do it and you began to feel better, did you ever feel guilty that you did that? Was there any guilt at all? I didn't. If I'm getting your question correct. Did you regret what Re you did? Regret? No. <laughs> Honestly, I didn't regret it. I, I just felt like I had to do it. I had to, to do it to be able to see how it feels. So I won't do that to myself again. How do you know when you are getting to the point um, where you could get suicidal? You know, things are happening. We, we all have stressful moments in life. We, you know, things happen to us. A friend of mine who was suicidal told me, look now, I didn't, it's not that I want to die. It's just that I want the pain to stop. Yes, yes. So because I wanted to stop, like she was on top of a building and she wanted to jump. But she had never thought of killing herself. She had never had suicidal thoughts. But she found herself on, on a, in a high story building. She was just there for something else. But while she was standing there, she realized that, oh, if I jump, all my pain will stop. And she was jumping. And so somebody saw her and shouted. And she came to herself and like, oh my God, what am I doing? Now, after she, she saw a psychiatrist, spoke to, psychiatrist who spoke to her over time, she realized that she was actually suicidal for a while before that moment. She didn't just stand there and decide to jump. Something had built up in her mind and in her heart. Did you have that the, over time before you started thinking, okay, let me kill myself? Yes. Yeah, I did. I had that. I, I think I had that for a whole year. I had that for a whole year. How can you recognize it? When, when I step out of my house, even when I wake up in the morning and I look at myself, it starts from looking into the mirror, stepping outside, walking down to school. You just meet someone who will call you fat, just say something bad about you. The pain. And then when you get to school, you still meet this teacher who does that. After school, going home, you are still going to meet this woman who starts saying, no feeling, no. so it was the pain. It was actually the pain. The pain was there for a whole year. And that, that, was, that, that was what made me realize that if this, this is what is going to stop the pain. It wasn't really about killing my, I just wanted the pain to stop. I just wanted to stop crying. I, I wanted to be happy again. Because I'm a very happy person. I'm, I'm very funny. I'm not quiet. I, I wanted to be happy. I wanted to be... I wanted to go back to myself, being myself. But I couldn't. I, the pain was too much. So... That was... I, I wanted it to... I just wanted the pain to stop. How do you feel about yourself now? Right now, I love myself. Good. And I love myself so much that what people say when they meet me, it doesn't really move me anymore. I, I, I just look at them and I tell myself, they don't know you. You look fine. I, I, I have stopped trying to look slimmer. I have stopped trying to, yeah, I'm trying to be healthy, but to look slimmer, to please people. I love myself. Nothing, nothing is going to break that. And I'm happy to hear that. Have you had anyone in your life also attempt suicide or have suicidal thoughts? No, I had, I had one friend. 
like exactly what you were going through she went through the same thing well her boyfriend married someone else <laughs> yeah with her she had to she had the dress she picked was for another lady who was coming outside who was coming from another country she picked the wedding dress she thought she was getting married to the guy but it was for another lady who who has the same body so when she told me i told her this this is not the reason why you're going like have you seen yourself this guy doesn't even deserve you i have had someone who wanted to commit a suicide but then how I, I would talk to you i was there i made sure i was there and i i, I realized she was also lacking self-love like the way i was lacking before so I made sure that she had that. I made sure she had it. She, she doesn't need to, to kill herself because of a guy. Because he doesn't deserve it. Because, ooh, <laughs> your funeral, eh? He'll take another girl and add it to the one that is coming. That's what I told her. I told her she doesn't need to. It's not worth it. Life is very beautiful. Yeah. When you, look, when you look at this from another angle, it's very beautiful. We all go through things, but life is very beautiful. That's what I told her. Do you regret those thoughts yes, or attempts that I you do. had? I do. I look back and I tell myself that, Rene, you shouldn't have even think of this. But probably at that moment, it, it had been an episode of heartbreaks. So, like, it, it just doesn't happen at once. It's something that probably you've been thinking about for a very long time. That, so as you said, it, it dawns on you that, what if I die? Will this just stop? And the society we live in will give you pressure. They will make it look as if that, why is all your friends getting married and you are not getting a husband? Mm -hmm. You are a bad person. You are not getting married because probably there's something wrong with you. So the day in, day out, persistent asking about nada ben na be ware. I den u nye bi ana u nye bi apiska na ware obi e se nse for the mu osika. So those utterances, you know, sometimes at once when they say it, it doesn't get to you. But when you get to the house, it does. I remember recently, I went to work and the one who was coming to relieve me of my duty, afternoon nurse was not in, so I was doing extra shift. And then one girl came from the pharmacy shop and was like, Oh, na saw the jaw crowd, bit my juma the whole day. After all, when you go home, you are going you go back home to nothing. Obienu a chum fi a kunu be no baby no al question. And so bit my the whole day. There were patients lying down. I tend to look at them. I'm 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 very I can be very naughty. So like I tend to look at the patient and I told myself that don't reply this girl now. So I didn't. And I kept working. No knowing one woman lying there was looking at me. I say, ah, Nasana e kasa chunipa. Mami me feel why. I didn't say anything. And I kept working. So this is how far our society can go. People think that marriage is the final destination in life. If you if if you get married, you've reached the ultimate. If you give birth, you are there. So if you don't have any of this, you are zero. That's the society we live in. They make you feel you are nothing. And then when you are also trying and you are not getting it, you feel less among your peers. So it kept happening, but after some time, anytime I remember that thing, I regret. Do you still have this feeling sometimes? Of wanting to commit suicide. Feeling less? Sometimes it does come. Sometimes I'm human. I don't have to pretend. Sometimes you sit down and ask yourself, like, what did I do wrong? Especially as we play, we know among our friends that we have worse friends. We have friends you are better off than them. You have friends you know that they, they do all the dubious tasks that you cannot do, yet they are getting the best men to get married to them. So like you ask yourself, what is really wrong with me? But one day I sat myself down and I told myself that these fingers, they are not the same. Our stars are not the same. We come from different family background. Probably the person is living a dubious life, but you don't know the connection the person has with God.
talking about family the person is coming from. Their ancestors might, might have done something to provoke God, to bless the whole family. Your family is not like that. So, like, don't just compare yourself to anyone. When is your time it will happen? I just motivate myself like that. If it's my time, it's going to happen. I'm glad you think so now. Yeah, I'm, I'm I glad do. you think so now. I do. We're, we're definitely not all the same. Yes, I do. We have different paths and different destinies. Yeah, yes. And you are whole and full and wonderful just as you are. You're living the best years of your life right now. Yes. Right now, this is the best year of my life. Yes. This is the best year of your life. Yes. Like, we're living our best life right now. And That's it'll be true. very sad that you spend the best years of your life feeling less. That's very true. This is when you're supposed to feel the most. That's very what true. What would you say to someone watching us right now who has thoughts of ending their life? Don't do it. It's not worth it. It's, it's, you have more ahead of you. You have a lot ahead of you. You can't end it now. Trust me. And then when you go through this phase, you realize you needed to go through it for more great things to happen. And great things are going to happen. Just tell yourself it's going to end. And then you're going to get more opportunities, more great things. So don't, don't even, when you're, if you're thinking about it now, just pray and take it off your mind and move on. That's all I have to say. Miss Kay, what would you say to anyone watching us right now who has suicidal thoughts? I would tell anybody who feels like committing suicide now, it's not worth it. It's not. There's, there's better and great things ahead of us. Talk to somebody. Confide in your pe people who you trust. Talk to your pastors, counselors, friends. Open up to someone. Think about the future. Think about why you are still alive. Know that as long as there is life, there is hope. Death is not the final destination. Until God says that you're going to die, don't even force it. Because you, you will die and you still be regretting. You did so. So suicidal thoughts shouldn't occur to anyone watching us now. It's, it's, it's not the best. Don't even think about it. Thank you, Ms. Kay. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Matilda. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. Difficult as it might be, know that you've got better days ahead of you. If you haven't taken anything at all from today's episode, I hope you remember this. No matter how painful and overwhelming your circumstance is right now, know that this too will pass. If you have suicidal thoughts, don't, be, don't feel guilty about it because some of the best people in this world have had suicidal thoughts. But don't see it through. Don't act on it. It's a thought. Let it pass. Talk to someone if you have someone to talk to. If you don't, pray to your God, whoever you believe him to be. And know that this too shall pass. The world needs you. There are people who need you. And people are well today because you are alive. So keep it that way. My name is Nashako, and this has been We Got This Africa. I'm really glad you ladies came on the show today to talk. I was very nervous or anxious, I think, anxious about this particular episode because I don't know. I just, I just was. Like I said, I have a friend who was very recently suicidal and I would never have thought that she was because she's this girl who's always happy, she's always on TikTok, social media. Like, you'd never think for a moment that she would be suicidal. I think that's where we all get it wrong. That, you know, judging, pe judging by people's social media, we think everything is fine. I bet if you were on social media at that time, your friends would not be able to tell from your posts. No. They wouldn't, they wouldn't, because I'll be posting funny stuff and just being me. So they wouldn't have any idea about it. Well, thank you for sharing. The one thing I've, I've learned from this episode, though, is that, you know, good things will come to all of us. There's goodness ahead of us. And so no matter how bad it is right now, it will pass. Right? It will pass. Vim, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> and 
And you know, I, I, I can't help but think that all of us deserve a life of goodness. You deserve a life of goodness. I deserve a life of goodness. And goodness is on the way. So let's live that life. Enjoy that life. Look forward to that life. Because yes, it comes down to that one line. You deserve a life of goodness. Thank you for watching. We Got This Africa is an April Communications production with support from Kaiser. Proudly brought to you by Frytol. Frytol, you deserve a life of goodness.